Hey everybody and welcome to a well-groomed wild ride with Steve-O. If you know Workaholics or any number of other humongous shows and movies, then you know this week's guest, Anders Holm. And man, I say well-groomed because we're right outside this guy's house. He's gorgeous and his lawn does get groomed very briefly. But, man, is this guy just willing to tell us juicy stuff. Like, for example, the Workaholics movie got green lit, like, production. Every, they're ready to go into it. And then at the last minute, they get screwed. They, and none of them were happy about it. And we're going to find out just how unhappy about it is. I don't think any of these guys have ever gotten into the cold, hard, juicy truth about how crazy that situation was. And that's just some of it. So strap on your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen, and let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Anders home. Yeah, dude. What's up? This is a score, dude. I'm super stoked to have you, man. This Thank is you. a double score because I'm like scoring points just being here, man. Yeah. At your house. Basically, yeah, at my crib. Yeah. By the way, I did say, uh, I told my wife, I'm like, yeah, they like come to you. They got this mobile situation. And she was like, is it like a big crazy van? I was like, nah, there's no way they want that attention. So like, don't sweat it. <laughs> and then I come around the corner. I'm like texting her like, so yeah, I was wrong. Uh, <laughs> you'll see it. And my kids are like, whose van is that with the big butt? <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, a, I, daddy's I'm, work friend. Yeah, I'm uh, kind of done with the whole Stevo and my face all over the bus. It draws yeah. a lot of attention. Yeah, and so we're gonna take paint rollers to it. You got to do like somebody else. Oh, Until yeah. you get the cease and desist, and then you just rotate to somebody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, share. Who the fuck ever? Garth Brooks. Yeah. Garth Brooks. Might be a good I was one. thinking about like, you know. Uh, something plumbing there it is <laughs> there it is you know? yeah. yeah just hella plays on words though we're like <laughs> we'll clean your pipes out from behind <laughs> I, don't, I don't know like, it's like fbi yeah. surveillance <laughs> Mm -hmm. Something funny like that. Not FBI NSA. surveillance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Winky face. Yeah. So, uh, so dude, th it's crazy. Um, this this upcoming weekend of of uh, box office uh, opening. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got two huge comedians going i wonder if there's ever been like a battle at the box office like this for comedians burt kreischer's the machine comes out the same day as your movie yeah. about my father yeah sebastian maniscalco both these are two stadium stunners both good dudes too yeah uh i mean obviously i got to pick my movie with sebastian but like um and i almost think there is some overlap audience wise, but I feel like it's two different worlds. I don't think they'll be competing because Burt's is just like balls to the wall insanity. Uh, I haven't seen it, but as far as I can tell. And then Sebastian's is very like, not wholesome. It's got some like, it, it goes there, but like it's a very wholesome father son, almost like uh, rom com. Yeah. Which I had, mm -hmm. when, I, when I read it, I was like, oh, this isn't like the guy chasing the girl to like, make it up to her this is like the guy trying to prove to his dad that like he raised him right and it's it's good yeah i mean you can you can frame it any way you want but there's no way around it this is a they a should super... mud wrestle uh they should mud wrestle this weekend for, or <laughs> next weekend yeah the, this is a clash of the titans and there will be one winner Someone's going to have to lose in this one. And what's crazy too mm. is that both Bert and Sebastian have the same management no. Oh, yeah. No. They're What's her name? Levity. Judy at yeah, Levity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, she told me. I was like, so who are your other clients? Because I saw her last week and she was like, Bert. And I go, oh, right on. I didn't even think about that. Right. So and she might have to dress like Two-Face, Batman style. Like one suit on this side, one on the other. Like My manager is uh, at Levity as well. Uh -huh. And he said when I brought this up that Judy's um, kind of feels very... Uh, 
I don't know, uncomfortable, a little bit like nervous about it. And, yeah. and I said, well, you know, what Judy is, is in this situation, she's the mom who had two kids play in the Super Bowl. Right, yes. And and Adam said, oh, I'm going to tell her that. You know? It's a win-win. Like, yeah, yeah, she's the MVP. Exactly. I mean, unbelievable. Because neither of those guys are funny. <laughs> um, no, like she, she's the MVP. She knows how to pick them, find them. Because like being a manager, you can find somebody who's super talented, right? But then to pick someone who also is willing to like have a vision and work on top of the talent, like you don't find those guys too often. And yeah. uh, those two are workhorses, man. Yeah, uh, on top of everything, she's and, gonna make a fuckload of money this weekend. She doesn't care about that stuff, though. Yeah, that's not what it's about. No, 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 no. Show friends. Show friends. <laughs> um, it's uh, I mean, it, it, it's amazing. Yeah. And, um, and then Little Mermaid. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. I mean, it is very misogynistic. Yeah. I, I I wrote a whole paper in college about how disgusting I had disgusted right. I was. But, you know, the, the premise of The Little Mermaid, let's get this straight, is that she has to give up the puss without saying a word. Right. And, and not even allowed to talk. Look, you're a woman. Your job is not. This is what we're teaching young, young girls. Yeah. Your, your job is not to even say a word. You have no voice. You shut up and give up the beef. What grade did you get on the paper? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what more offended of, the, the premise or that you did a paper in college. <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. going on here? Right. This is in, you, you went to college for this? two weeks. <laughs> this yeah. is what you did. This is why. <laughs> Where, so did you, did you do like a semester? Uh, I mean, I... Uh, a quarter of a semester. Yeah. I, 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 I made it... Um, back for a second year as a freshman and was gone by yeah. Thanksgiving. Out here in California? Where was it? I, it was at the University of Miami. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Nobody nobody graduates from there, right? I mean, it... Uh, Bless yeah. you the rock. <laughs> right. Yeah. Within, within one week of class starting, I was um, placed on final disciplinary probation. Mm -hmm. uh, relocated in the dorms. Yeah. Like, yeah. when you went to the school for the first day, were you like dead set on finishing or where you're like yeah this is gonna be my year and then it's that <laughs> night the first party happens and then you're just fucked it's like when you get your license and you're like i'm never gonna drive drunk yeah <laughs> cut to this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> where's the road <laughs> right how long did you have your license for before you got a dui oh um, Did you make I got, it a year? I got my license um, when I turned my birthday in uh, my birthday in 1994. Less than a year. Yeah, I got my first DUI within less than a year of yeah. starting to drive, and I got my second DUI within one month of getting my license back <laughs> from the first. <Wow>. Consistent. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you know what I did? I quit driving. Yeah, that's right. There it is. Yeah. You know, you got your priorities straight. I had a homie in high school uh, who we had like every two months we had something called a B day. And at a B day, all the teachers met at the beginning of school. So students showed up uh, like two hours later. Right. And whenever it was a B day, you'd go to somebody's house, you drink before school and you go to school kind of hammered. And my buddy got a DUI on the way to school, like wow. hit some car, da, 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 da. And parents, I guess they just didn't know that we did this. So my parents were like, I think he's got a problem. He was drunk on the way to school. I'm like, we were all there. <laughs> I don't know what happened, huh? Crazy. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, he was 17. So he's in the same wheelhouse. Right. But never got the driver. You uh, seem like a guy who always got away with it. Um, you know what? I'm not a guy who got away with it. I'm not that like clever. I'm a guy who pushed it just enough, like far enough until I was like, all right, what am I doing here? This is kind of right. crazy. Um, and then there were other things where I just absolutely didn't give a shit. And people, teachers, parents would be like, come on, just like, just do this. And I'd be like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'll just figure something out. You know, 
Uh, but I, I like, I had stuff going on. Like I was a swimmer and like, I was like, I'm just going to swim my way into college, wow. which is what I did. I was like a real shit, uh, real shit bag, bad student. And just kind of like weaseled my way in that. And I was like, okay, I'm here. Still was just like a bad student in college. I thought I'd like reboot, you know, like start over, like rebrand. Uh, that didn't happen. Uh, but then I discovered like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna start like trying to write movies and stuff. And like, then uh, after graduating from college was like, okay, now I'm gonna move to LA, finally rebrand, you know? And then I just met three losers like myself and uh, yeah. the rest is my history. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, seeing uh, you guys at the, uh, on the red carpet of the Comedy Central roast of Charlie Sheen. Uh huh. That was like right when the workaholics came yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and uh, man, it's it's turned into quite the quite the career. Dude, it was um, the game changer and like the best gig too, because it was like we were like doing sketch comedy, uh, just fucking around, like you know, same as you guys, kind of like a crew right. that just was like, let's roll on this, you know. Um, and then after like six or seven years of doing that, uh, got the show and then the show just was exactly what we needed. It was what was exactly what a lot of people were looking for. And uh, the success was like perfect. And you were able to do creatively what you wanted to do? Like Everything, everything. And not only like uh, as far as like scripts and like stories we pitched and stuff, but just like you knew that if you were going to improvise something, you could say the craziest shit ever. And then like, nobody would be like, Whoa, Hey man, can we, can we talk to you for a second um, about that? Like, what are you talking about? Your, your landscaper's doing a great job out there. You better be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all you gotta do is like, just slip him like a $10 bill. Hold off. <laughs> you know, we're, we're pretty, we're pretty loosey goosey yeah. on, on this. We, 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 uh, you know, we don't, we don't mind. You, you can hear it a little bit, right? A little bit. So, you live in a gorgeous neighborhood. You like to take care of it. There's freaking lawns that need to get mowed. Like, I'm not going to tell this guy he can't do his job. Right? right. Like, come he's, on. Yeah, he's good this at it. This is reality. Um, <laughs> but it, it would be nice if he wasn't doing it. Hey, it's all good, man. Yeah. Is that good. because Comedy Central let you guys do whatever you want? We were nobodies. Like, they were, I was just saying this to somebody the other day, like, uh, Nick Swarton, yeah. hilarious stand-up comedian in all these funny movies, uh, Reno 911, got his own sketch show. And they were like, giddy up, here we go. And they kind of were just like super hands-on with that. And we had a budget of like 650 grand an episode, which is nothing for them. Wow, and, uh, dude, that's a lot. Wild Boys was episodes? like maybe three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just like speedos, though. Right. Like, how many? Like, what are you, what are you guys buying? Like, speedos. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so you know, with production and like gaffers and sets and all this right, shit. Right, 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 right. You know, you're 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 still figuring it out, and like, they just didn't bank on us. Uh, not in a negative way. They just were like, yeah, let's give these kids a shot. Um, and you know, I we we got to make exactly what we wanted, uh, the way we wanted to make it and uh just had the best time going into workaholics did you did you guys have this like special feeling that you guys knew that it was gonna be as big as it was so will i am song i got a feeling was based on a conversation we had (laughs) on top of the capitol records building (laughs) yeah yeah um no like our feeling was we think this is funny and like we are pretty hard on each other as far as like that's not funny you know what i mean right, like right, mm, right. Man, we can do better and uh we loved it we had a good time we thought we were doing things that um hadn't been done on tv yet we started doing like these little adventures per every episode it was less sitcom and more kind of like action comedy um but just like shrunken down in scale and uh push the envelope a little bit we were relatable you know we were like just dudes who wanted to like meet girls and drink beer and like keep their job and not get fired you know? how did the 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 seth rogan's the zach efron's come into the fold was that like after the show was already out and they were fans of yeah, it yeah yeah i mean um we we 
dipped in uh, we dipped our toe into like the stoner comedy world right yeah um and so like the overlap with seth's fans uh was a thing so then we were on his radar um and so they brought us in to do neighbors they had a montage oh, right, right, right. where it was like our fraternity comes from a long line of people who've uh like created wonderful things for like the world of partying right and it was like in the 50s it was these people 60s these people i think we were the 70s and we invented like beer pong um but i think like the lonely island guys were like from the 30s or something it was a bunch of like right recognizable comedy people that in a rapid fire succession um illustrated this fraternity's history historically speaking i've not always been that great with my diet or my health but lately man am i doing really well at filling in any gaps because i do not go anywhere without my ag1 from athletic greens and it's just important this stuff is delicious i love to start my morning with it and it is comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition and by daily nutrition i'm talking about everything that you need it's really important to me right now to make sure that my diet's in good shape i'm not eating too much i'm getting everything i need because i'm taping my bucket list comedy special in london england on july 14th and i want to look my best i want to be thinking my best and this helps with my cognitive ability i want to <laughs> my gut health i mean dude this does it all and if you want to get five of these convenient comprehensive travel packs plus an entire year's supply of immune boosting vitamin d then get on over to athleticgreens.com slash stevo where with your first purchase you will get five travel packs and that vitamin d for a whole year and i'm telling you i swear by it like i said i don't go anywhere without it so one more time go to athleticgreens.com slash stevo to jump on this deal and let's get back to it Man, so that was pretty fun. When you said invented ping pong, I just had this this picture of you know, like in in Thailand, they famously have these women that that shoot ping pong balls yeah, yeah, out yeah, of their yeah. private parts. Yeah, I've never seen that. I saw yeah, it. Oh. I I elected to not go to that. Yeah, but um. But I just thought, like, man, would it, it might have been funny if they showed you guys and, like, the way you invented ping pong. That was how was, we did was, it. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, just right out of the old poop shit. Queefing it out. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think the way we did it was okay. Uh, I, no, it was uh, – that would be great. Different movie. That's actually more our speed, like, uh, which we did Game Over Man. Right, yeah, you know. and, and I got to be in it. It, yeah. was, it was so rad, man. That I, was I the really... best. We're like, uh, will you jump off this thing? You're like, this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. problem. Uh, and Seth produced that and uh, helped us kind of like shape the story from what it originally was, which was like a telethon with like a bunch of celebrities he got taken right. over. And then we just had to like dial it back because like <clears throat> it just was going to be a scheduling fucking nightmare to have uh, so many people and all that. But uh, no, we were lucky to get you guys. Ah, oh, dude, we loved it. Party and boy. Let me tell you this too: you do different things, and you never hear about it. You know, like yeah. you can kind of like you can get a sense of how big something was, yeah. and w whether you hear about it going about your day. Right. I heard about that when game over man came out i heard about it everywhere i went dude so like that got viewership no it, it did you know it's crazy they didn't they they would never tell us how many people watched it what they did tell us was that it was number one for two weeks in a row which back uh, then is a different game but like they didn't have that <clears throat> even back then they didn't have a, a movie that was number one two weeks in a row and then they like uh they buried it and so, like, to find it, it you had to, like, type in game over, comma. and it still wouldn't even pop up wow. until you got to the comma or the man, and then it would be like, all right, fine, I guess you want to watch this insane movie <laughs> with people getting dicks cut off and heads are exploding and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, but they never told us how many people 
watched it, but Adam had a meeting with somebody uh, who was pitching a movie there, and they were like, man, I guess your guys' movie killed it, huh? And he was like, yeah, I don't know. And the guy was like, yeah, they showed me like this chart of like the biggest movies, the middle movies, and the movies that didn't do well. And our movie was up there with like the fucking giant Sandler movies and like those types. So, you know, Netflix, after the strike, let's talk. I don't know. Yeah. By yeah. the way, that's the whole thing. Strike, like we don't know how many fucking views we're getting from these streaming companies. Like, how do we know what's a hit or not? Right. Besides word on uh, word on the street, word of mouth. Why? What are they protesting during the strike? Stuff like that? Well, yeah. You used to kind of know, like, based on Nielsen ratings, like, how well a show was doing. It wasn't, like, behind closed doors, where if you created something, they'd go, yeah, no, it's it's doing well. And you're like, right. how well? Very well. It's a blessing and a curse, though, because that does shield you from failure. I want to know about failure. Okay, I, you, learn, you can learn from failure. Right. You can learn from success. But they, they don't let you... They don't afford you that opportunity. Uh, but no, on top of that. Um, it's like doing a YouTube video and not knowing how many views it gets. Like, yeah. I'm just going to leave this here. You're like, yeah. no, but is it? Yeah. It's crazy. I, I applaud your response to that. I think that that's fantastic. Like, it's crazy. Part of me is just so sensitive that being shielded from failure sounds good. But I also relate to that. But like, like you're a skater, right? So yeah. like, I always look up to skaters because I, I can't skateboard um at all but like it's based on failure like sure. you almost always fail like Big even time. when you're just going somewhere you might eat yeah. shit right Big time. um but you get back up and it's still just kind of part of yeah uh, part of being a skater is falling fail. couldn't agree more and, and what's crazy too is that when like a, a skater is in public and they try and do a trick they try and do a kick but they don't make it yeah. there's like a like haha you want to laugh yeah, at him right. but when you walk by the basketball court and you see someone throw the bad they don't make the hoop you don't ha ha yeah, it's yeah just, that's true yeah, yeah. You, like you want to pick on skaters we but, should go to a basketball court right now and just <laughs> see how that goes like you suck <laughs> yeah <laughs> like later for sure oh uh, um, man you, you've been uh actively at the 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 picket line with per, like I just went the other day. I was doing press for the movie and then came back in town and hit it up. And yeah, like it's so funny, man. I posted a picture of me uh, with the sign, letting people know about what's going on, and they're like, "Oh, you had to post a picture to show you were there." And it's like I'm wow. posting a picture to promote the movement of what we're doing, right? Then I get people who are like, fuck you, you're rich. And I go, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I had some guy who's like, tell us how much money you got. I got millions. Okay. <laughs> but I'm there for the people who right. were me before that don't have the millions that deserve the millions. Right. Like right. it's a community. It's like, it truly is like, you know, this town's not that big. Like. It's a big city, but like when you get to a certain point, like we all know each other and there's new people coming in, right. people leaving and uh, you got to kind of fight for each other. And like the things we're looking for is just like the pay scale has changed. The, the industry's changed. Everything's altered. And yet the way people are making more money now, we're getting paid less. And yes, I'm talking about me, but I'm talking about people who are also just like getting their first gig well they're where they're making like uh you know maybe they're making like 50 grand yeah they're making it in like a month or two because that's just how it works but they might not have another gig for a year or two because it's tough right and they need to get this insurance and all that kind of stuff um so we're fighting for that we want like a little more transparency you used to sell things into syndication right so like it'd have its first run then it'd be on like MTV or something like that, or USA, and you'd get paid again because there's more ad dollars. And so like, you'd get paid X amount the first run, then you get pay paid Y amount for the second run, but now these things are just living one place forever. Right, and like the idea of residuals Yeah, and so like, away. you aren't getting that long money that you used to get, even though it's still there in a long way. Um, and then everybody made fun of my hat I had a hat with like a long thing to protect my neck. Yeah. I get shit about my hat. You can't win. Can't did, win. Did Adam get in, get any flack? He had a sign about gays or. 
He did. Everyone, I, 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 every homophobic person in his following or whatever just went in on him. And he was like... Well, I, I would picture it being the, other, being the other way around, where people were saying that, that they were offended on behalf of the gay community. No, because Adam's pretty gay. Oh, good. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, every, the dudes in his, chat, in his comments were just like, we can't lose another guy! We love yeah. you! You're, right. You can't be gay! <laughs> Uh, and he that, is. That's classic. He's pretty gay. Um, did Adam's mom know how prominent Adam's wiener was in Game Over Man before the premiere? I don't. I don't know. Actually, he might have. I think he had to have warned her. He had to have warned <laughs> so her. I know she was there. I know that he acknowledged it. I just can't remember if. I want to say that he said that during the premiere, when he was like naked, he was sitting next to his mom. And maybe she like put her hand on his leg to be like, oh my gosh. But at the same time, it's like, well, don't do that either. Like, that's not the way to express this. I could be wrong, but I think that's. I, 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 I vaguely recall that. Something like that, where like it was acknowledged and he was like, just don't even acknowledge it. Just watch the movie. Yeah, um, the. Uh... Man, it, it was great, and, and congrats on the success, and, and thank you again thanks, for letting man. me be a part of that. Of course. Um, the, uh, it feels still pretty recent that there was um, a Workaholics movie in the cards with, oh, yeah. uh, I'm guessing, Paramount Plus, because yeah. it's a Viacom, yeah. Comedy Central connection, yeah. and... Um, it was green lit, all ready to go. People hired, like you know, schedule on, and then they it just got shut down at the last minute. Yeah, like literally, wrote the script. Uh, we were ready to go. We had the cast back and all scheduled and everything. Uh, we rented stages, and then when they came back from like uh, in the into the new year, like that first week, they were like, "We've got a whole new global agenda." Right. Which sounds dark. Uh, and maybe it is, but they've got a global agenda where basically like the amount they were going to spend making our movie, our um, intellectual property just wasn't worth that to them. Because they were worried that it wasn't going to appeal to international markets. Right. They thought right. it was going to be uh, like only really hit in America and they needed too niche, too niche. And look, <laughs> I get it. I get it. But like. Tell us that a little sooner. Uh, sure, tell us that a little sooner. But also, like, I'm, 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 I feel bad for those guys over there because Paramount Plus is imploding. And when we were <laughs> it's working, imploding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I, I um, the, 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 here comes a can of worms. But uh, the um, our Jackass Forever, yeah. the the last Jackass yeah. movie, just went to Paramount Plus. Yeah. A and and it went to Paramount Plus um like without any form of of a video on demand uh right. window in advance. Right. And it went to Paramount Plus without any uh establishing the market value by mm -hmm. by uh bringing it to other streamers. It just they didn't offer it anywhere else. They just sold it to themselves. Yeah. And uh, and there was speculation that 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 was not legal. You know, I know. That <laughs> I don't doubt it. I mean, that's the whole thing. This is why we're striking because everything's changing so quick. Like the rules are being made up as they go. Right, Paramount Plus didn't exist when we negotiated our contract. Exactly. And then yeah. all of a sudden, here it is. And oh, now, really? Oh, I so didn't you know guys that. were going to get paid if it went to Netflix, but it didn't. It went to Paramount. Right. And, because and we, Viacom. Right. The, 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 the oh, argument was like that, that it's not fair. Like, had they taken it to Netflix and gotten an offer, taken it to, you know, the, like right. HBO Max, like wherever, and then, then they would have established a market value for right. it. They would have understood what it's worth. But because they did not do that, they just sold it to themselves. Presumably, they didn't like uh rip themselves off <laughs> you know if there's anything i know for sure about jackass it's that they did not rip themselves off they really actually look out for themselves pretty darn well and speaking of ripping off in the f second season of jackass i ripped off 
every darn hair on my body with wax. It was a pretty iconic bit if I do say so myself. And you know what, dudes? With summer here, I mean almost here, is it, is it important to make sure that your body is not covered in disgusting hair? telling you and you don't have to rip it off with wax that's what manscaped is for you got manscaped products just making sure that you're confident and ready for summer and boy are they hooking up the wild ride listeners right now with the manscaped performance package 4.0 it comes with the lawnmower 4.0 which is the waterproof cordless trimmer you got the Weed Whacker 2.0, which is for the nostril hair and the ear hair. Man, there's nothing more humiliating than talking to a chick with a bunch of hair coming out of your nose. Think about this, guys. The performance package has everything you need loaded with crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver, ball toner. I'm telling you, man, they've got it all. And especially in the summer with the chafing, the the Manscaped anti-chafing stuff. Dude, nothing hurts more than chafing and nothing's more embarrassing than chicks thinking that you are ungroomed. So go to manscaped.com and use the promo code Stevo to get this very important performance 4.0 4.0 package and by using the promo code stevo you get 20 percent off your order plus free shipping man i love manscaped you love manscaped jump on this deal support the podcast and have a killer summer looking really good one more time manscaped.com promo code stevo now let's get back to it they they're notorious for this they, and they never they never syndicate shows for the most part except for south park which has like a different deal uh they like they don't like to syndicate which is what television the whole thing is based on like you syndicate right. so you can make more money and make more episodes and subsidize <coughs> by the way welcome to hollywood minute um, <laughs> fucking and it's just strange because like uh it feels like they're just in quicksand man like people are getting laid off the people we were in contact with as we were developing it we'd be like hey where's greg they're like greg is someone we don't speak about anymore like people are just like disappearing consolidating and you're like yikes what's crazy though is that with the uh you know situation and uh, with uh jackass forever Mm -hmm. um like they've really kind of looked into the situation. I don't even think they had to look terribly hard. I think uh, Dave England Googled how many uh, subscribers they have on the Paramount Plus platform. And I was shocked that they've got like, they had like 30 million. And then I feel like- They got Yellowstone. That, like, uh, they that, don't though. They make Yellowstone, but Yellowstone's not on Paramount Plus. Cause I was like, I gotta watch this fucking Yellowstone. Everyone's talking about yeah. it. And then when I went on Paramount Plus for Yellowstone, it wasn't on there. It's on something else. That's I, I don't know, but, but it's crazy to, uh, I mean, it, it, I don't know. Siri, where is Yellowstone streaming? <laughs> well, when it guys. comes on, it has MTV Productions. Uh, you're right. It says Paramount Network, but I want to <coughs> Yellowstone was, has MTV Productions? When in the beginning, Paramount it has, Network like, used to be Spike. Ooh, but, okay. I mean, whatever. R.I.P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spike. Yeah, Spike TV. Whatever, whatever it is, um, it sounds. They got like, Paw Patrol. That's their fucking cash cow. Yeah. Every every subscription they have is because the kids are like, what? Mom, I Paramount want Paramount Plus. Yeah, Paw Patrol. And yeah, shout out to Paw Patrol. When I when yeah. I was downloading like Paramount Plus, the like it had like a, a two star rating. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I yeah, I'm just mad that they didn't give me like a VIP login. <laughs> that's, it. that's all you wanted yeah that's, it. that's all i wanted because you make me feel special the ufc gives me a vip login yeah you know? it is one of those things where like when you when you fly like you pay everything to fly first class or whatever and they're like here's a hot washcloth <laughs> and you're like this is very nice and then you open the washcloth you're like this is a rag but yeah. the gesture right makes it feel make me feel special yeah yeah and, and i am personally offended that in, from my perspective, yeah. they done you dirty. Yeah, they hey, done man. they done you dirty on the Workaholics movie, and I know that you guys were uh, 
kind of putting it out into the ether that what you wrote is awesome yeah. and, and that like that you're amenable, open-minded to another but, entity picking but it up. So here's the thing is that they go, hey, by the way, you guys have, I think it was two or three weeks to find a proper suitor for this. Because if we couldn't do that, they needed, they did pay us. It was a pay or play. So we got paid uh, because, you know, they held us off the market kind of thing. And I did write a script. But so they had said you got three weeks because if you guys don't find somebody before that, we're going to write it off. We, we gonna, we're oh, going to use wow. everything else to write off for tax purposes. That sounds purposes. like the National Enquirer catch and kill. Dude, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> and I go, yeah, man. Hey, I'm glad someone's there crunching the numbers so that uh, you guys are, are, are making ends meet. But, like, what the fuck is happening? Wow. It's just going to take our baby. It's like the, the whole. If, if... Like, who's the guy? Who's the fucking guy who got a raise for being like, you know what? If we play ridiculousness for twelve hours a day, we're gonna do better than if we play anything else. Right. And they tried it, and it worked. And I'm not dissing uh, ridiculousness. It's ridiculousness. A- Obviously, like they get eyeballs, but for someone to program, for someone to be lazy enough to program a twelve-hour block of just ridiculousness, Monday through Thursday or Friday or whatever the fuck it is. I think Catfish is now sneaking in there because that's a wonderful show as well. But you guys can't come up with new stuff. Right. Did teenagers stop getting pregnant? It's <laughs> come on. Come on. It's so it's I so weird about that to me. One. It's so lazy. And like, look, I get it. Uh, but to me, it's like doing free throws from down here. Yeah. It goes in more often. But like. I want to see you take a fucking yeah. half court shot because when it goes in, everybody goes bananas. Yep. I don't know, man. Um, what else sucks? So, so, so the presumably those three weeks elapsed. Those are over. Those are gone. They they did the catch yeah. and kill. And by the way, the whole thing is like if you're Netflix, there were people who were interested, but they would have to buy. They'd have to pay for the movie, and then at some point it would go back to Paramount Plus and no one's going to do that right we're in the forever business now so they would do a licensing deal with Paramount essentially yeah yeah and so what what is that two years three years against infinity years you know what I mean like I mean what's next for these conglomerates I know they start buying they don't know they don't know they have no idea if they had an idea uh, shit wouldn't be so wild right now like Max is coming out this week HBO Go, HBO Now, HBO, HBO Max, Max, and now Max. And that's just been like in 24 months. I, the that's whole, fucking crazy. The difference, the I difference mean, is that there's more companies underneath this umbrella but what, what, and more content. So more, you have to subscribe to each one separately, right? No. So, the, so they've like gobbled each other up. So the new one will be Max. And by the way, <laughs> free commercial for you, Max. You did it. Way to go. Uh, but like they just went through this whole thing of like glomming up other uh, entities yeah, and all that stuff time to Warner. compete against everything else. It, it, it was Time Warner and then it was uh, AT&T bought Time Warner and then it became like uh, Warner Discovery. Right, Discovery's got this cash. Like yeah. what from like the fishing shows? Yeah. Right. Isn't that fucking crazy? Jobs. Unreal. I think people zero in on the AT and T buying it as like the where everything went sideways because uh-huh. AT and T just it was not their lane, and they bought it and then it everything. Well, I only buy like HBO or whatever for like one or two shows. Then I'm like, fuck, I'm locked in. Now I got all these different apps because I want you know I want to watch different shows. Dude, I, th- I think they fucked up. I think there are certain brands where you're willing to pay for what it is, right? And HBO has that audience and has that brand where they're like, we make, we have four or five elite shows on at a time, right? For a certain kind of demographic. That's all you should be. Just be that. People will pay for that. Yeah. Because they, because it's the best show. It's the best TV. Succession. 
uh, yeah. Game of Thrones when it was on. Like, fucking. Yeah, House of the Dragon's pretty dope. It was, yeah. It was it was sick. Sick. Curb. Like, they had these elite fucking shows that are doing things that uh, other people aren't doing and they're doing them well. They should have just been like, we're good. We're over here. We're doing our own thing. Right. Because, like, I don't know what you're. Com- you're not competing with bigger, you're competing with better. Unbelievable wisdom in that. Don't compete with bigger, compete with better. And there's even more wisdom in not letting bad habits get bigger, but replacing them with better. And that's what fume is all about. What's a fume? It's something that I carry in my pocket everywhere I go. It is a device that helps you replace bad habits with good habits. And by bad habits, I'm talking about chemicals, even drugs. You know what? Replace those with flavored air. Yeah, it's what this is. All natural, plant-powered device for flavoring air. How about that? I love to get behind giving up bad habits, and that's why I got this relationship with fume, but I didn't think I needed a fume because I I, I quit bad stuff a pretty long time ago, even though they sent it my way and I like it so much that I keep it in my pocket all the time. And I think you're gonna like it too, and if you've got that bad habit, maybe a bad habit that you think you should quit, then I think you can agree, it's time to try fume. And it can't be any easier. It's tryfume.com. That's T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com. And if you go to tryfume.com and use the promo code Stevo, then you get 10% off your journey pack. And that is all you need to get on this journey to knock off the bad habit and get onto this good habit very healthy, nothing unhealthy about it, and I think you know who you are if you need to quit. So, go to tryfume.com, use the promo code Stevo. You'll be glad you did. Now let's get back to it. When it, when everything's easy, right? There's no other app that's easier than the other one now, right? Like it's easier to go to McDonald's than it is for me to go to uh, a fucking like high-end burger place, right? That takes time, that takes money, but these all cost the same. They're all right at the end of my clicker. But if one's better, I'm just gonna go to that. Right. But what about like uh, also, are you worried about movie theaters getting bought out by like Amazon Productions or Netflix or like, because aren't movie theaters starting to like. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. That's tough too. But you get, there's the advantage of like Amazon gets to distribute like smaller movies that might never get. Uh, but these are all new negotiations that nobody's ever thought of, you know. Um, yeah. With, with with your new movie about my father. Yeah. Is uh is in it, theaters on May twenty sixth. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. And and, and it, a damn fucking funny movie too. Did you see it? My screener wouldn't goddamn work, but okay. my my executive assistant is yeah. raving about how fucking hilarious it is. It's funny. And, and he's um. Describing different scenes. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the the skateboard. The next year I'm gonna make you a yeah, Nintendo. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, uh, I mean, he, he's describing like he's De Niro's super funny. He's raving about it. Yeah, De Niro's super funny. In the opening, he's he's dressed like he was. So the whole thing is it's based on like Sebastian's relationship with his dad, uh, first generation immigrant from Sicily to Chicago. Uh, and now Sebastian's meeting this, she's met, he's met this like super honky waspy girl and he wants to marry her. So the Italian immigrant father's like, I got to meet the family. And I play like the, the douchebag soon to be brother-in-law type guy. And they go and they stay with these blue bloods in like Virginia or some shit. Um, and so they do in the beginning of the movie, they flash back to the eighties to kind of set the table for where Sebastian comes from and his relationship with his dad. And De Niro's like fully 80s up. I don't want to get too detailed about it because it's he looks insane. Um, and it's just so funny to see the guy from like Casino, Goodfellas, like 
these taxi driver like Cape Fear, these serious movies, and he's in this fucking ridiculous outfit. It's so funny too because in the, a lot of those early movies, they uh, made him to look old. Mm-hmm. And right. It sounds like now he's old, and they're making him right. to look young. Right, man. Yeah, he's done it all. It's wild. But so yes, De Niro, Sebastian Mascalco, Kim Cattrall plays my mom. Leslie Bibb plays my sister. Uh, Sebastian's love interest. This kid, Brett Dyer plays my little weirdo brother who's super funny. And then my favorite guy who plays my dad is David Reishi, who's on succession. He plays um, Carl. Yeah. He's so funny. He's so fucking funny in this movie. Just like in a way, remember like American Pie, uh, Eugene Levy? Dad? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like came out of nowhere. Yeah. And everyone's like, who's this fucking guy? And like Canadians know SCTV and you know, people, some people knew SCTV back in the day, but he kind of just like exploded. And I, I hope David gets that because he just like steals every scene, like just a, a comedy animal. I love it. Yeah. Is there a, a streaming component where like, you know, you see- I don't know yet. I think it's a, it's a theatrical run. Uh, What's the studio? Lionsgate. Lionsgate. Okay. Um, so wow, that's the machine is Lionsgate too. I don't I don't know about that machine movie. Fuck Burke Kreischer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean I'm sure it is. You know, yeah, I mean, who knows? Lionsgate's a smart production company. They should they should make uh, my movie. Um, yeah, I'm sure they're gonna have a big weekend, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be. I don't know what the streaming component is. I'm sure like. Maybe they were smart enough uh, to just wait and be like, well, we just killed it at the box office. Who wants right. it now? I mean, it definitely informs what a movie is going to go for on a streamer. Right. How it did at the box office. Yeah. Yeah. So. Dude, you, you're preaching the choir. I just, yeah. I, the business end is like, there's part of you who's, that's like, oh man, they're, they're doing this to me. And then the other part is like, well, I should be smart enough to like figure this shit out. Right. Right. But I'm not. I'm not smart enough, so we'll see how it ends. How crazy was it working with Robert De Niro? Like, how on point is he on the set? Is he just ready to go? Uh, There's not, like, an intensity. It's almost just like a... uh, He's just chill. Does he ever fuck up his lines? uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, like, um, he also just will roll with stuff, too. Like, if something, you know, if somebody, like, drops a plate, this now becomes part of it, you know, and he's got things so cold that like, uh, he works it in, you know, not Mm -hmm. that that's like a superpower, but like he does it very naturally. Um, and he's, and he's just like, he gives himself to the director. This is my second time working with him, which is crazy. I worked with him on a movie called the intern uh, a few years Mm ago and he was the same there. Uh, our director, Laura Taruso on this movie, she was in charge and not like a drill sergeant, but like, Robert De Niro, the icon of acting, was looking to this fairly new filmmaker to be like, and now what do I do? What do you want from here? Like, that's great. You, I'm the paint, you're the brush. Like, let's make this happen. And like, I try and be like, all right, man, if that's De Niro and he's giving himself like that, you gotta just like roll with it. Like, if she wants you to try something you don't think it's funny or gonna work, fucking try it and do your best at making it work. And then they'll either use it or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not the me show. What was, was the, the intern a comedy? Was that with Anne Hathaway? With Anne Hathaway. It was like a light drama where yeah. Anne Hathaway was this kind of like um, girl boss CEO of this uh, clothing delivery upstart thing. I played her husband, uh, kind of like taking care of the kids at home. And then De Niro is this elder guy who takes an internship at this company. Oh, was he like a retired CEO guy? Yeah. yeah. Then, okay, he he worked in that. business for a while and he he saw how, he, it was very like just a juxtaposition type thing where it's like, I come from this world, this is the new world. Guess what? Everything from the old world, you know, we don't need to throw it all out. Like some of it's useful. And Anne Hathaway's character like took advice from that. And then also he learned things from like the new school, that kind of thing. Right. Um, yeah. And it was a sweet, sweet movie, killer airplane movie. Just like everybody was like, I saw that on the airplane. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Nice. Yeah. 
And, and you had to have heard a lot about the inventing Anna one. Yeah, that was like a fucking rocket. Just like everybody saw that. I, I loved it. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. The story's crazy. Yeah. That lady's just next level. And that we're in this world where like, if you've got the co- cojones, if you've got the balls to like just go out there and say you're somebody, people will believe you because everyone is scared to like miss the bus, right? So she's like, the whole story is that like she's trying to open this exclusive club and if like you're not in right. on you're going to lose and like this culture of like young geniuses or whatever you want to call them in New York with ideas that could be the next Uber or this and it's like, you better drop a million now because it'll be worth a billion in 10 years. So people are just like, ah, here, take my money. Right. And then these kids are just burning through it and being yeah. like, yeah, I lived for 10 years like a boss, but uh, things didn't fly. Sorry. You right. know, what was this? Yeah, it's uh, the story of Anna Sorokin. Uh, it, it's on Netflix. It's called Inventing Anna. Yeah. And uh, Durr's over here was, was, was epic as the uh, husband of protagonist she's and, like the end so there's like a the way they package the story was through the eyes of this um investigative journalist who's trying to figure out who this woman is who's 24 and is convinced all these huge mega banks and like major players in new york to give her millions of dollars to open this essentially like soho house yeah mm-hmm. right and on the eve of her like getting all these people to like give her the money things are starting to not add up and like this is the backstory of her like getting loans from this bank to like Mm. pay this person back and like it's a whole fucking mess and she basically like digs herself deeper and deeper and deeper into this hole of like lies and stuff and ends up getting arrested and the investigative journalist uh, kind of maneuvers her way into interview her in jail and just losing her mind and you know and yeah. my Anders is the the husband who's sort of dealing with the fallout of the intensity of this uh his pregnant wife being so immersed in wow this. yeah what a it's, role and anna klumsky plays the investigative journalist um uh gardner what is oh fuck uh she's on ozark she's like yeah 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 uh god i well this was years ago now right but. yeah we don't need to do too deep of a dive, anyway but it was a great she's show. amazing as this as this woman and everyone's like what the fuck is this crazy accent that you're doing right because it sounded so bad kind of right. but then when people would hear the real girl speak <clears throat> she was like from russia but doing a fake accent at the same time <laughs> so like the way she was speaking was kind of crazy julia gardner um is the actress uh so she kind of had to like go on talk shows and be like this is the way the girl talked. It's not a bad accent that I'm doing. It's a bad right. accent that she was doing. Right. Um, but so when you got the the comedy stuff and you're able to do the drama stuff. Like that's a huge. Yeah. Drama has been the new like, you know, there's just fewer comedies also. There's just fewer right. comedies getting made. Um, but yeah, I did this uh, this movie. I got a show called Muppets Mayhem that just came out last week on Disney Plus. You should check out with your kids. Um, That was comedy, and I play like this streaming executive type douchebag at the record Uh label. Um, And then I'm dipping my toe back into drama and doing this Godzilla show for Apple TV Plus. Nice. Uh, That'll be out, I think, like October or November. I mean, it's amazing and epic to be able to. I mean, I'm super lucky to like have these opportunities and um, it's like the more opportunities you get, the more like people go, oh, he did something different. Right. Maybe he could do the thing he could be, we think he could be good for here or we see him a different way. So yeah, I'm trying to like just put another arrow in the quiver. You know what sure. I mean? Sure. Um, yeah, and doing it sooner is better. Yeah, right. Like Adam Sandler... I don't know that I, anybody saw him do anything really dramatic. You know, he had the... He had the one where his punch drunk family love. died in 9-11. Oh, yeah. I that mean, was yeah, that fucking was, heavy. That was, I never saw that. I mean, he had Gemstones or the... Uh, dude, the, 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 yeah, the uncut. So I yeah. think his serious roles are dude, that, unbelievable. Yeah. That gambler movie, the uncut, uncut gems. Uncut gems. Yeah. Uncut jams. Wow. Just fucking... It, was, it made you so uncomfortable, yeah. and it was so great. But, I mean... 
all of these examples came decades into his career. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. and then it was a curveball. Yeah. And, you know, like it, it was I rad. Keep, but I keep hearing that uh, Netflix movie he did that where he's like a basketball coach is awesome. That was good. I saw that. Yeah. People are saying it's like great. Yeah. It, it, it was. It. it was good. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. But isn't that crazy? Like a, a great, a good movie with Adam Sandler. <laughs> A lot of people are like, yeah, I don't even know what that is. I'm like, but but the thing wow. is, like, if ever I see Will Ferrell or Adam Sandler in a serious movie, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. You like Will Ferrell serious? Yeah. Like the one where he had the voice in his head. I really like that. I can't remember that one. Oh, when he was uh, uh, with Stranger the writer, Than Fiction. Yeah, yeah Stranger oh, yeah, Than Fiction. Yeah, and then yeah, the other one where he was like a straight fucking drunk and his family was leaving him and he had the yard sale on the front oh, yard. Yeah. like. I mean, like, you just know he's a good fucking actor. I got to see that. It's good. I, it's real tough, especially when you have, like, a specific brand of comedy that comes from, like, your essence, right? Like, so when Sandler is, like, yelling and Billy Madison and he's like, rah, 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 you're like, oh, that's hilarious. But then when he does something dramatic and he's yelling and you hear yeah. the same thing, it triggers the laugh. But you're like, oh, no, this is how this guy screams. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, fuck. He's like losing his mind right now. <laughs> yeah, it can. It can. And I'm sure it's Will Ferrell, Jim Carrey, like these guys uh, who Jim have Carrey. these brands of comedy that we almost ingrain in our own brains and like repeat their jokes and all that stuff. It's hard for them to shake yeah. that and be like, no, I'm actually screaming for like I'm in pain or whatever, yeah. you know. I mean, Eternal Sunshine of the Spot, Spotless Mind, like, yeah, it's, a cool it's like a lot of people's favorite movies. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, you just know, I think anybody, not anybody, but like a, a comedian who's that talented to be that funny yeah. is talented enough to make a really good, solid, yeah. c- cerebral um, movie. Yeah. Are they? Except Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> 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 For sure. Although he's pretty good in Natural Born Killers, but yeah. Are they still um, gauging like the the effect that COVID, like the covid like when when jackass forever was coming out yeah, yeah, yeah. they were like the they had an actual number like the the like public level of comfort for going to a movie mm-hmm. theater is at like 80% now right 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 and then like the omicron came out like right and, dips, and then right. you know and we got pretty screwed by covid fuck but COVID's over now. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you believed in it to begin with. <laughs> um, <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. It's it was never here. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's gone. I mean, I feel like we're in a post Tom Cruise Top Gun Maverick world now, right? Where like right. that movie did so well that everyone's like, okay, so people people will go to the movies now. Yeah. Uh, but what will they go to see? Um, I don't know. I went, not that I haven't gone to the movies, but uh, I'm like, saw Top Gun, saw the fucking new Avatar movie. Uh, I've seen a bunch of movies in the theater. Um, Air. Oh, do, do you, I mean to watch that. Air's Air. good. It's cool. Um, do, are, you, are you guys still doing the podcast? Yep. With, uh, yep. This is important. Uh, it's me, Adam, Kyle, Blake, and uh, we just shoot the shit every week, essentially every week. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good time. And then like, so that started during the pandemic because we were like, we got to do something. Right. Um, and we couldn't see each other. So it was like a good way to like link up. We were doing right. it over Zoom, um, you know, because we're all working all the time. Like I was in Mobile, Alabama, making this about my father movie. Adam was Atlanta. Blake was in Vancouver. Kyle's all over. Uh, Kyle was playing pickleball. (laughs) Kyle's just like destroying his body (laughs) playing pickleball. Uh, You play that, right? I've played with TK. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Fucking, I mean, it's a way of life. Uh, There's actually a couple courts around the corner that I've gone to. And uh, our neighbors brought us and we went down there and they're like, What's up, guys? Hey, it's five bucks a head, but also we got free sangria. I made some old fashioned mix. Like, who wants? And I'm thing. like, are we about to get smashed down here? <laughs> um, candidly, Vinny over here thinks he's better than everybody. It, oh, God. <laughs> just you got the touch? I'm just and kidding. He, uh, it, it, he reached out to TK, mm-hmm. said, hey, we're going to. Uh, we're going to record a podcast with Anders. Yeah. Like, can you give us anything juicy? Anything juicy? And. 
What did TK He's say? He's like, nah, dude, this guy's squeaky clean. <laughs> he <laughs> said, he said, well, he is turning 42. Yeah. Ask about after parties. And that was really about it. I found out that you're kind of a sneakerhead, so that kind of interested me. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I saw, I see what you're doing here. Yeah, yeah I yeah, like those. Yeah, those yeah. are great. I wore them for the reason that. Reason, okay, yeah. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I got my eyes on New Balances a little bit. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, but it started with Workaholics when um, you, you get famous, right? And then people are like, "Hey, come on by the Adidas showroom," <laughs> <laughs> and you go, you know, and you you go to Adidas, and they're like, "So take what you want." And you're like, oh, I'm going to walk out of here with 10 pairs of kicks and like three tracksuits, you know. Um, and they were super cool. And that kind of just kicked off like having too many shoes. Right. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, well, I like New Balance, too. So let me get back into this mix. And now it's just out of control. We're trying to get Steve Lace up with New Balance. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, oh, I rave. I just bought the, the new New Balance Carhartt collab. I'm, oh, nice. I'm nice. super particular about um, not having um, animal, leather. you know, like, yeah. like leather. Like They got vegan. If they got if they got synthetic New Balance, then, then a, I'm, I'm down. It's, it's like, like we're going to the warehouse. Collab, dude. <laughs> new Balance, yeah. if you're listening. I, I've been wearing uh, basically just my Nija mm-hmm. shoe, my Nija Houston Nike skateboarding shoes. Yeah. Because they're vegan and I love them. Sick, dude. Yeah, dude. Um, well, so, dude, it's get to the f- fucking movie theater yeah. on the 26th of November. It is crazy to be back in a movie theater, too. Yeah. It's been like streaming, 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 streaming for a while. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I, um, I, I, I love Bert. Yeah, you know, I like my. I'm managed by. You're on my, the bird train. I get it. That's fine. I, I I'm managed by levity. I I I feel for Judy. I'm stoked that she's the Super Bowl mom. Yeah. Um, I wonder. Uh, like we. I wonder if they're giving out screeners for the machine. That's a big indicator. You think? If they're if they're, if they're letting right the critics see it. If a movie sucks dick, then they don't let the critics see it. Interesting. And I, and I'm, I, I, I know for sure that your movie, how about but it my didn't father? Didn't work. Interesting. <laughs> we gave you a screener, but it didn't work. Yeah, what, uh, that? what does that say? Huh. It worked for my executive assistant. Okay, you, know, right. you know what I think it was though? I is that addresses. is that they, like uh, I got two email addresses, like yeah. one like that I'm really precious about. Say and them that's into that camera. In. Say them into that camera. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it came into my my main email address, and yeah. then I was like, oh, I got to sign up and create an account for this. Right, I'm going right, to right, use right. my burner email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think because the email addresses didn't match, mm-hmm. it got shut down. Right. Yeah. So it did work. Like my assistant. But dirt, is, Bert didn't. I said dirt. Bird didn't send you a screener? I did not see a screener. Interesting. Dude, I got the link. I'm going to watch it tonight. Yeah. Oh, you got to it. Yours. I, yeah. Isaac, mine. Okay. Yeah. Isaac is fucking I know. raving I'm excited, about dude. how goddamn good it is. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Everybody's funny. It's a feel-good movie, too. Like I said, it's, it's a rom-com, but it's between a father and a son. You know what I mean? All the things that have never been said uh, get said, uh, you know, and it's about, like, recognizing yourself and your parents in yeah. in sometimes we do that in bad ways when you get older you're like god damn i'm turning into my fucking parents i'm doing this i'm doing that i'm definitely turning into my dad it's wild I'm right about, yeah I, but then you go but the the great thing about my folks i'm i'm doing that too and like just gotta make sure you focus on maybe both of them i guess i don't know yeah but yeah a lot of laughs a lot a lot of laughs is i mean dude i i believe it and be sure and check out um Muppets Mayhem Muppets on Disney Mayhem. Plus. It's me. Okay. It's Lily Singh, Taj Maori, Sar Chaudhry, um, um, and the Muppets. All the fucking the band. What's the Wrexham Football Club Ryan Reynolds thing? Is that on Disney? Is on. Apple? That is on Apple. Cause doesn't Rob so, have an Apple show? Yeah, Mystic Quest. Mythic, Mythic Quest. Quest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rob, I, I think show. Rob is Apple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. There's so many goddamn streamers, but there, there's no subscription it's to crazy. the fucking movie theater. So go to the goddamn movie theater. It's easy. And watch About My Father. Yeah, make some noise. Get fucking wild. Yeah. Have a good time. Just get in bowl. there and fucking do a number three. Yeah, do a number three. <laughs> Butter the popcorn. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> that, that, that's the best Robert De Niro joke of all time, I think. I was doing a number three. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Well, fuck. Dude. Thanks for having me, man. Dude, Good to see you guys. You. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you. This was fun. All right, so so we're on the other side, and like, if there's anything that that you're not comfortable with, like uh, most of that has to go. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a well-groomed episode of the Wild Ride Podcast, or what? Now, you guys who stick around to the end of the episode, you you always know how grateful I am for you. And this week, I want you to know that I'm grateful for more than just my street team. I'm grateful for my sister. And I cannot believe that I'm about to say this, but my sister and I now have matching tattoos. Ha! My sister waited until she was over 50 years old to get her first and only tattoo, which says right on her arm, something positive. Just the words, something positive, and now my arm says the same thing. It's in my niece's handwriting, which is special. I have a matching tattoo with my sister and my niece, and that's a big deal, but not a bigger deal than my street team. So, guys, this one, this one uh, is extra, extra meaningful. If you go ahead and take that screenshot of however you're consuming this podcast, post that screenshot and tag our boy Anders home and uh, let him know that you appreciate him. It'd be, it would be a good look for me. I love you guys so much. Thank you. And Cindy Wind, I love you especially. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody.